Hey there! Welcome to the Build Bay. I'm a fan of getting the most out of my hardware. Therefore I decided it's time to upgrade my 3D printing workhorse, the Creality CR6 SE, with a self-developed hotend cover. The main goal of this project was to achieve the same or better print quality while increasing the print speed to the machine limits. One key element in 3D printing is efficient cooling, which is why I decided to replace the single shroud stock hot end cover with a dual shroud setup. I also replaced the 30 mm hot end fan with a 40 mm version. Once the cooling had been significantly improved, I was able to go ahead and crank up the print speed. So without further ado, let's jump into the build and testing of the Bullhead Mark 1 CR6 SE hot end cover. Let's first unplug the cables and remove the original hot end cover. Be careful with the cable of the original fan. And in case you're disassembling your hot end for the first time, you might have to remove some hot glue with a heat gun. Once we've unplugged all the cables, we can start dismounting the hot end's mainboard. There you have it. Quickly unscrewing the small heatsink fan and removing the silicon sock. Lastly, removing the old heat cartridge. Now that we've disassembled the entire hot end, let's go ahead and design a new one in Fusion 360. Let's prepare the new hot end for printing, drawing on some supports, quickly fixing the orientation of the print bed, more draw on supports, and putting the right settings in the slicer. I use PETG filament and three parameters for printing. And off it goes to the printer. And there you have it, the hot end housing, a housing cover, and a fan duct for improved heatsink cooling. Time to start the assembly with some threaded inserts. Easiest way to slide them in is using a soldering iron. Works like a charm. Next step, inserting four 10 radial fans, one for each hot end shroud. They simply slide in. Don't forget the cables. Lastly, tightening it all with M2 screws. Next, reattaching the hot end mainboard with two M3 screws. Keeping it organized with a bit more of cable management. Let's go back to the printer for the installation of the new hot end cover. To power the two radial fans, I've prepared this white piece and an extension cable to connect the thermistor. Pulling through all the new cables. And don't forget the cables of the bed leveling probe. Final wiring step, extending the cable of the heating cartridge. In order to withstand the current, I'm combining the old connector with a 40W heating cartridge that comes with a longer cable. After connecting the two parts, I'm using some heat shrink tubing to make it a tight connection. Fumbling the heating cartridge through the housing before reinserting it into the heating block. And finally, screwing on the hot end cover onto the hot end carriage. And don't forget the 40mm fan duct for the heatsink cooling. Installing the 4010 axial fan. And again, some final cable management with some zip ties. Replugging all the cables to the hot end mainboard. Let's test if everything is working as intended. Radial fan, check. New heating cartridge, seems to work. Everything is working, time to install the hot end housing cover. 
and I've also designed a small cover for the mainboard. And here comes the moment of truth. Check if the airflow is centered under the printing nozzle. Spot on. Once the assembly and functional testing was done, I jumped into finding the maximum print speed of the printer. I deliberately kept all components but the hot end cover stock. That means the 40 watts heating cartridge, the 0.4 mm nozzle, as well as the printer's mainboard are in their default configuration. The only upgrade I already did in a previous project is the installation of a dual gear extruder. I used the Banshee and the 3D Printer Test Mini as my reference prints. To narrow down the max print speed without the extruder skipping, I also developed a print test which is printing the same pattern at 5 mm per second speed increment. So let's jump back into the tuning process and compare the different results. Before doing any sort of tuning, let's first increase the machine limits directly in the printer settings. I'm doing that for the X and the Y axis. Simply increasing all speed parameters is causing the extruder to skip repeatedly. Time for a more structured approach. This print test is testing various print speeds at 5 mm per second increments. The lowest part is printed at 95 mm per second print speed, whereas the top part is printed at 70 mm per second print speed. Let's give it a try. After running the test for various print speeds multiple times, these are the final settings for PLA and PETG for my machine. Let's check if we have any impact on the print quality. Left side, stock hot end cover and stock settings. Right side, new hot end with tuned settings. I'd say the quality of the Banshee is just the same or better while printed way faster. And the same is true for the Printer Test Mini. Equal quality, printed way faster. Print quality for the stock hot and cover and stock settings. Compared with the dual shroud hot and cover and tuned settings. So how does the increased print speed affect the actual print times? On average, I was able to cut the print time for PLA by between 15 and 20% and for PETG by up to 10%. As I'm using the linear advanced feature, the high K factor of 2.2 from a machine was preventing for higher increases for PETG. All in all, I'm very happy with the result of this project. Depending on the size of your print, the speed increase can result in a significant time saving of multiple hours while having better print quality. I think you should definitely do the upgrade if you're owning a Creality CR6 SE. You can find a link to all print files as well as the bill of materials in the description. And of course, I'm very much interested in your thoughts and ideas in the comments. But before ending the video, some final tips. Be careful when removing the hot glue with the heat gun as the original board holder deforms quite easily. Make sure you're using the silicon sock for your heat block. I wasn't using it in the beginning and the significantly improved cooling was causing some thermal issues. If you decide to install the heating cartridge the opposite way, you might have to cut a small piece out of the silicon sock to allow for the cables to pass through. Also, remember to do a PID tuning after replacing the heating cartridge. I also recommend to do a bed leveling after working on your printer components. And lastly, make sure that none of the cables are rubbing on the print bed when printing. A bit of cable management and bending the cables should do the trick. That's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this project and I'll see you in the next one.